I want to open with a question. How do you design your destiny? Do you believe that you don't have the luck to do so? Or maybe you think that you don't have the innate talent to design your destiny. Imagine I told you that there is no such thing as luck or innate talent, that these concepts don't exist outside your perception. Socrates called certain popular beliefs bogies, things of which to frighten children with. My name is James Tarantino, as Amanda said. I came to this country as an immigrant with no family, no money, no formal education, and yes, English wasn't my mother tongue. But because I freed my mind from certain limiting concepts, wanting to grasp a greater force from within, one of the most successful news anchors of our time opened priceless doors of opportunities when I was 23 years old, and that man was Larry King. Through my journey, I saw many people across our globe who feel that the door of destiny is shut. So I posed the question, how can we get to a higher state of mind? A higher state of mind to design our destiny and experience happiness. Well, the answer is not luck or talent. Not luck or talent. We often put a magnifying glass on the most insignificant things which distract us from the big picture. The philosopher Marcus Aurelius said there were times I met luck at every corner, but luck is the good fortune you determine for yourself. The concepts of luck, lucky break, good luck, lady luck, rob you from the power to design your destiny and experience happiness. Luck is not some invisible force or a roulette of fate which randomly picks and chooses who is lucky and who is not. Luck is a higher state of mind. Luck is a perception. Each success we see today is due to an investment made in the past. Everything you perceive as lucky today has deeper roots which often the eyes cannot see. For example, as John Adams said, without the pen of Thomas Paine, the sword of George Washington would have been wielded in vain. Today, Van Gogh is a lucky star. Yet during his lifetime, he sold just one picture. So is Van Gogh lucky or not? Today, the telephone that we all use is a profitable invention. Yet when Bell's telephone was starting, at, was starting out, buyers said, what use could this company make of an electric toy? Luck, as you see, is a matter of perception. Two people are saved from a burning building. The first one will say, I thank the universe for I shall have the honor to see my family again. The second person will say, I'm so unlucky. I lost all my files in the fire. Let me share with you a personal story. When I was 16 years old, after suffering from a family tragedy, while doing this research, a voice within me asked, what about those who were born into wealthy families? Aren't they lucky? After reading the book, How to Achieve Greatness, the author writes, the finest gifts of nature are often found in persons of very humble families. Look at the memoirs of rock stars and business tycoons and renowned art artists and scientists. Most of them emerge from broken and poor families full of tragedies. Even in our most successful movies, Harry Potter, Superman, Batman, Spider-Man, Iron Man, and even James Bond, all were orphans. All were orphans. So how do you design your destiny and experience happiness if there's no such thing as luck? Well, a talent is not the answer either. As with luck, talent is not some roulette of fate, which randomly picks and chooses who shall be born talented and who shall not. True talent is a higher state of mind, built and forged over time like an astronaut or an Olympic champion who constantly perfect their physical and mental focus. The concept of innate talent is like a mental house of cards. It's enough for one card to fall out of its place and the entire house collapses. For example, it's enough for acclaimed athletes today to experience one stressful event and suddenly all their streak of victories vanishes. Talent is not innate like the color of your eyes. When you get mentally distressed, your eye color stays the same. But however, your talent and your performance 
are negatively impacted. Talent is also a matter of perception. The man who created Mickey Mouse was fired by a news editor for lack of imagination. One teacher described Albert Einstein as mentally slow, unsociable, and adrift forever in foolish dreams. So how do you design your destiny if there is no such thing as luck or talent? Luck and talent are subsidiaries to the problem our world is facing today. There are tensions and explosive problems in each and every generation. In a preview of our collective past, we try the same players, the same games, and expect a different result. For example, the Declaration of Rights of Man and Citizen applies to both men and women, an equality that will start to be realized only two centuries after. We put out a violent fire in the Far East and it explodes in Africa. We put out the fire in Africa and explode somewhere else. Do people have self-rule? Why can't then people control their bad thoughts, habits, and fears? Why? And the result is a sense of despair. And as a dear friend of mine said, the toughest moment of your life is looking in the mirror and knowing that you failed. I come here to say to you today that happiness is not a pursuit. Happiness is not a pursuit. Happiness is here and right now. Think about it for a second. Are you a star now or only after you win an award? Can you feel good about yourself right now without validation from the external world? So I ask today, how can you design your destiny and experience happiness? The answer is one word, intentions. Your intentions are more important and more powerful than your words or your actions. Contrary to the common knowledge, you live and die not by the power of your tongue, but by the heart of your intentions. You live and die not by the power of your tongue, but by the heart of your intentions. Your words and actions are limited to patterns and models. Your inner intentions, however, are limitless. After a meeting is over, people don't remember your words as much as they remember how you made them feel. The vibe which emanates from your true intentions. A middle-class person can give a few dollars to help somebody out with the purest intentions. Yet, a wealthy person can donate a million dollars, but only do it for the purpose of a public name or a tax write-off. True, actions are important, but when people's inner intentions are not aligned with their external words and actions, ultimately, it causes failure and unhappiness. When your inner intentions are pure and clear, not only will you experience happiness in quantum leaps, but the arc of your voice, your actions and your words will come alive. Not too long ago, it occurred to me that discovering your voice is not a luxury, but rather a basic necessity of life. A basic necessity of life. The greatest empires of our history never fell because of an outside force but because their voice contradicted their inner intentions. Your little intentions create the size of your success and the size of your happiness. For example, we are a people who have a government, not the other way around. The federal government did not create the states. The states created the federal government. The little creates the big. So, I tell you today to free your mind. And when your intentions are pure and clear, you will see that life is not how you react to the inevitable, but how you create the inevitable. When your intentions are pure and clear, you will see your state of mind will see that happiness is not a pursuit, but happiness is here and right now. When your intentions are pure and clear, you will see and you will have new powers to design your destiny. You will not think in terms of either or, but how to merge A and B together. Picasso took the Western art and African art and blended them together, not only in geometry, but with the moral system entailed in them. You will experience moments of enlightenment when suddenly time stops, the skull line disappears, the lover becomes more poetic, the athlete becomes more agile, the philosopher sees further. Your new sixth sense will inspire you to pick up new wondrous ideas and guide you on when is the right moment to take brave risks. So ladies and gentlemen, I want to say to you today,
that I believe that the power of the world is not measured by its global economy or by skyscrapers, but by the purity of our intentions. And I wish today that let the world, let be told to the future of the world that in the depth of winter, where nothing but hope and virtue could survive, we came to meet destiny with pure intentions. I believe with all my heart and soul that this aspiration is not of a certain race, class, or party, but the birthright of humankind. Enjoy your day.